Hi, I'm Flo from Progressive. Being a baseball fanatic like me can be stressful. It's not all sports points and touchdowns. So Progressive is going to help you take your mind off your team for a moment. Instead of thinking about how they missed that goal point score, think about the Name Your Price tool from Progressive letting you choose coverage options based on your budget. Unlike your team that missed the end zone net area. Well, anyway, hope this distraction about Progressive's Name Your Price tool was helpful. It sure kept me from thinking about all those penalty balls. Yay, sports! Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey. Hello. Hi. True Crime Kent here. Uh, Now, I know what you're thinking. Man, I wish more straight white dudes would start a true crime podcast. Their voice just isn't represented enough in this community. Well, I've got good news for you. I'm straight as hell, whiter than Moby, and I sound like Larry the Cable Guy had a one-night stand with Dolly Parton in True Crime Kent. We'll do deep dives into what most would consider the otter examples of true crime. John Wayne Bobbitt and his missing schmeckle. Carl Tanzler and his obsession with a corpse. Or how about that time a man from Colorado welded two tons of steel to a bulldozer and then used it as a chaos machine to bring his town to its knees? Yep, we've covered it. We make fun of it. We came, we saw, we ate burritos. Hell, we got hate mail. So join me and my trusty co-host, the operator of 911 Calls fame, and let's go down a smelly, blood-filled rabbit hole together. This, this right here, is True Crime Kent. Roosh, and I listen to the Eric Zane Show podcast because he's an idiot, swears like a trucker, loves puppy dogs, and gave away a kidney. Now here he is, Eric Zane! Hello, sorry I'm late. Sorry I am late. I sat down here to start the show and my little uh, piece of equipment had no charge on it. I said, oh God. And you know, frankly... Um, everything that was planned has kind of had to be rearranged because of this absurd catastrophe that went on yesterday at the Oscars. Okay, let's get into it. Let's not waste even half a second um, of time about, wow, wow. What son of a bitch is this incredible? Will Smith is it's gonna be a, a a great night for him. You know? Um he's up for the uh best actor uh Oscar and um you know who knows what's gonna happen? Chris Rock is presenting And he throws a joke aimed at uh, Will Smith's wife, who I didn't have any idea that uh, she has uh, alopecia. And um, she's kind of been leaning into it. If you were to um, follow her on social media, she's like, oh, come on, I'm ready for you, alopecia, and and, uh, whatever. So she is... um, actually uh coming out and uh and and not wearing wigs or anything which is outstanding i mean seriously no big deal and uh chris rock throws a joke out there that's uh, i really did not think i mean if you were to look at it knowing full well that he's about to get the shit smacked out of him on stage by will smith who always seemed to be me to be good natured and uh I, you know whatever and he didn't strike me as a, it was a lunatic i mean this is this is psychopathic behavior here and all the way up until the moment of impact i don't think uh, uh chris rock whoops hold on a second here i don't think rock in any way suspected that it was it was going to go like this but shit did it Oh, my God. Incredible. Now, uh, so I've been like kind of uh, scrambling to put this show together. 
So if I you see, if you can tell, I'm like, oh, what is he doing? It's, it looks like he's circling the drain there. It's because I am. So this is the big moment of truth. Let's check this out. Here we go. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win. <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please, Lord. Look at, look at Will. He's like, yeah, oh, I'm in such a great mood. You, you can't see her in this, in this image, uh, Jada. But uh, she's there. She's, you know, looking uh, pretty as a picture, as always. And, and, and I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All okay, right? that's the joke. There she is. Okay. Look at her. Look at that incredible gown. Will, ah, ha, 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 ha. He's laughing. He thinks, look at that. Look at that laugh. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. So just a little nod to the fact that she ain't got any hair. Two can't wait to see it. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think she's upset though. I don't think she liked that. You can see that that did not. Uh, I don't think that landed. Jane Two can't wait to see it. All right. <laughs> no, she no no she didn't she didn't like that. So Will, I think I think what you got here is Will thinks it's hysterical, but she does not. And so he's like, oh look, man, if I don't uh. If I don't get after this and kick his ass in front of the world, uh, I'm not going to be allowed to have an open marriage anymore. So she was not happy. (laughs) That was a a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Now, Now at this point, we don't see it, but he is up and walking towards Chris Rock. He calls him Richard because that's his character in the film. Now, everybody, no one in this, in this building is expecting what's about to happen. They are, ex- they're like, well, is he going to co- come up there and put his arm around him and say, hey, come on now. But then that doesn't make sense either. So maybe they're like, well, wait a minute here. Is this, is this, has, has Chris Rock crossed some imaginary line and Will Smith is going to uh, now switch into when he played Muhammad Ali and crack this little fella right in the face. Yes, he is. Holy shit. God, this is ugly. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Holy shit. Now, if you're just seeing this, yes, that actually happened. How about Chris Rock taking that right in the face, that open-handed smack, and then he is able to, the show goes on. This is incredible what he does. But what a, what a horrible moment this is. What a fucking psychopath. That was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh. Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. This, this is so fucked up. What a, what a, what a goddamn lunatic. You Th- my name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Oh, boy. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? Oh, oh. <laughs> I can, oh, okay. Motherfuck. Greatest night in the history of television. Oh, greatest moment, perhaps. He's 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 rattled. He is rattled, and he now has to continue to read whatever the hell he had to. Okay. Oh my God. Oh. Mother fuck. What is going on? I mean, look at him. He thinks it's great. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> he, he thinks it's so funny. He loves the joke. Oh. <laughs> and this is the night that he is going to win uh, Best Actor. 
You know, one of old, he, he joins select company. Very rarefied air. This will be only the uh, fifth time that a African-American has won this award. African-American man or whatever the hell it is. Uh, I don't even know, but shit. That's probably the last time after this, after this bullshit. Wow. Um, okay. Welcome in to the Eric Zane show podcast. This is a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. So, uh, this is not anything personal adventures. This is definitely news and nonsense, but mother fuck. Uh, this show happens each and every day at about the same time from the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio. Smack dab in the middle of freezing cold Hudsonville, Michigan, where we have started third winter. Third winter started this weekend, and it's been just a bitch. It's 17 degrees out right now. What the fuck? Uh, yesterday, the wind was blowing horribly. It was terrible. I'm not even remotely done with this story, by the way. I've got more. I just wanted to kind of throw out some of the particulars of what's uh, making this all go right now. This show happening Twitch on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live brought to you by my friends at Irvine's auto repair, Grand Rapids hybrid and EV. If you would go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live, hit the follow button and then subscribe to what I'm doing using your Amazon prime account. You can link up uh, Amazon prime to Twitch for free and get the show minus commercial interruption during the middle of it. And you can use the emotes. Thank you very much. And it helps keep the puppies fed right here. Facebook, facebook.com slash uh, Eric Zane fan page. Also brought to you by Irvine's. I'm cracking up at some of the uh, references that are being spit out. I'm trying to do my thing and read at the same time. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's hard to do. Men in black eye. <laughs> Asshole. Huh. He just got seven pounds of 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 flesh from rock. See what I did there? Kind of. Someone's already made the meme of Chris Rock getting slapped side by side with Batman slapping Robin. Robin. <laughs> Hitch? No, bitch. Slap. God. Aram says he's lucky no one was watching. That's true. No one gives a shit about the Oscars. But they, they, they're watching now. We're all watching it after the fact. And no one cares about anything. All right? You could have all of the former Best Picture winners rise from the dead who have passed on to have a group acceptance speech and no one would give a shit about that because of what has taken place. Kenny says, I like the question, who slapped who? With the answer, I am legend slapped donkey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Donkey? Chris Rock isn't donkey, you idiot. That's Eddie. That's Eddie Murphy. What? Huh? What the fuck is wrong with you? Kate says that's zebra. I don't know. Does he play a part? Does Chris? You see, you're fucking shit up already. <laughs> uh, Terry thinks this is fake. Interesting. I don't know, man. I have, uh, I, 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 I can't, I can't get behind that. I don't know why I keep hearing that stupid noise. That is, uh, that is weird. All right. I'm also on Twitter at Eric Zane Show on Twitter brought to you by blue frost. IT. And then, of course, the almighty YouTube. YouTube, 
Uh, Eric Zane Show on YouTube brought to you by Frank the Tank Fuss. If it was just five fingers, what do the five fingers say to the face? I would think it was fake, but his outburst after leads me to believe it was legit. Yeah. Um, Adam says that, quote, hit was super muted sounding. No crack of skin on skin slap. I don't know, man. I think you guys are reading into this too much. It, it definitely, I think it is what it is. The guy's a lunatic and he slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. I mean, you know what? So Adam and Terry, would you just fucking suspend your uh, uh, conspiracy theory for one second and just have fun with this instead of your dumbass opinions that this is staged? Nick says they should have stripped him of it and removed him from the building. Anyone else would be sitting in a cell. This dude assaulted another dude in front of a billion people. My God. Yeah, that was, that was horrible. And then there's, there's a lot more to this though. Okay, this is, um, I can only, I, I, it's tough to get um, highlights of this because things are embargoed and, and whatever and scrub, scrub from the internet. But in this case, this is um, about two and a half minutes of Will Smith's acceptance speech. All right. And a lot of this is just screwed up. I'll be pausing it quite a bit to make fun of him. Okay, how awkward is this? The guy wins this incredible award. Oh, man. Uh, Thank you, Andrea. Richard Williams um, was a fierce defender of his family. Why are these people cheering? What a bunch of fucking clowns. Jesus. They're like, yeah, yeah. Poor Chris Rock just got the shit smacked out of him. And everyone's like, yeah, way to go. In this time in my life, in this moment. Where I, where I just smacked the shit out of Chris Rock. I am... An asshole. Overwhelmed by what God is calling on me to do and be. Isn't he a Scientologist? I could have swore this guy was a Scientologist. You might not want to reference God if you're a Scientologist. Is he? Hold on. Uh, is Will Smith a Scientologist? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. All I have, when you look up Will Smith, it could you, you could ask any question, and everything is just him smacking Chris Rock. Could have swore he was, though. Overwhelmed by what God is calling on me to do and be. In yeah, God's calling on you to smack the fuck out of Chris Rock. Okay, got it. This world. This is horrible. Making this film... I got to protect Ingenue Ellis, who was one of the most, the strongest, most delicate people I've ever met. The entire black community is like, we finally got a guy come up here to win a big award, and he smacks the fuck out of another black guy on stage. Well, shit, now we got to wait another 80 years. Son of a bitch. <laughs> what an asshole. Oops, sorry, I'm fucking this shit up. So you see, he's talking about protecting family. This is his thing. This He's protecting his family because Chris Rock made a, a crack about his, uh, about his wife. Moment. I am overwhelmed by what God is calling on me. 
making this film, I got to protect Ingenue Ellis, who was one of the most, the strongest, most delicate people I've ever met. I got so to protect stupid. Sanaya and Demi, <laughs> the two actresses that played. You got to protect them? Movie. What do you mean you got to protect them? <laughs> yeah, start talking about how you smack Chris Rock. That's the only thing anyone cares about. What a, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed. You know how when you like every time I scream at you guys and I get angry and uh, and blow my stack, I feel bad about that. Ninety nine percent of the time, it's probably one once or twice I didn't. I don't know, but uh, you know, you you feel like an asshole when you act like a fucking dick, and then you're like, oh god, I'm, I'm sorry, I, sh- I shouldn't have done that. I misstepped again. This is t- this is not happening here. He's not doing any of that. He's just digging his his heels in, and I don't know how on in my life to love people <laughs> I'm being called on in my life to love people Chris Rock's got an ice pack on his fucking face poor guy and you're talking about how you love people get the fuck out of here and to protect people okay and so, to be a river to my people okay yes you're a river you're a a, a river of uh, of solid right hand crosses to the face uh, on a man who's not defending himself you piece of shit look at him now no to do what we do you got to be able to take abuse you got to be able to have People talk crazy about you. <laughs> yeah. In the business, you got to be able to have people dis. He okay. The irony here is madness. Respecting you. So now he's tying it all back in in a veiled way to what Chris Rock said to his wife, which was not a big deal. And you got to smile and you got to pretend like that's okay. But Richard Williams. And what I loved, thank you, D. Denzel said to me a few minutes ago, he said, at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. And Chris Lack says, yeah, motherfucker, the devil just hit me in the fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah, so everybody is enabling this piece of shit. Um, he went on to apologize to... Um, you know, the Academy and everyone there and shit like that saying, Hey, I'm sorry that that happened, but he did not apologize to Chris rock. Um, Chris rock says, I am, uh, I am not going to press any charges. And, uh, I mean, so he's all class. I mean, this, this poor guy, God dang it. I, I, this is absurd to me. This is such an absurdity that I, I actually feel bad. I watched it and I was like, fuck. And, and it's uh, after seeing that horrific behavior on his part, uh, smacking the shit out of poor Chris Rock, who's now, I mean, what the fuck? And then um, <clears throat> I guess um, Denzel and uh, a couple other um, artists, uh, actors pulled Will Smith aside and they're trying to give him a pep talk about his behavior. It, this is, this is terrible. Uh, not owning it in any way. We got another person suggesting it's fake. Shmoo money says, watch it in slow motion. Looks super fake. Uh, no, I think anybody. And why would I watch it in slow motion? Come on. Would you guys stop this? was a total bitch slap maneuver. That's what happened. He smacked the shit out of him. My God. This is shortly after Will Smith at the Vanity Fair party. 
When I started club going to Will Smith, uh. he sent me water. He sent everything, man. We celebrate each other. We were really tight. Why, why are you celebrating this piece of shit? And even if it was fake, which it wasn't, all these people are kissing his fucking ass after he just obliterated that guy, embarrassed the fuck out of him and himself on TV. Fuck Will Smith and fuck all these assholes. This chick's got a fat gut. She shouldn't be wearing that fucking dress. Excited for you, Will. Thank you to Vanity Fair for having me here. Thank you to my brother, Mateo. Thank you to the party for having me here. I got to play the ball song out of here. Will, I love you. Hollywood sickening. All right, because of this, I now support Trump. I'm totally kidding, but can you imagine? <laughs> Holy fuck, this is so bad. Um yeah, I uh I woke up this morning and my charity scam Mike texted me. I think I need to get him on here. He watched it live, charity scam Mike. This is what I woke up to. <clears throat> So Will Smith punches out Chris Rock on stage. If you want to call me tomorrow and we put this on the air, I will go into a rant like you cannot believe. I have had enough of these people acting like assholes. They have ruined the sanctity of the Oscars. What a nice thing to watch with your family with popcorn and a, and a fire. And a guy jumps on stage and punches out his friend. The world's gone crazy. What a fucking catastrophe. Really, really bad. Man, um, and uh, you know, seriously, you start off the day today and it doesn't matter what's going on in Ukraine. It doesn't matter that Joe Biden is trying to start World War Three. It doesn't matter that Taylor Hawkins is dead. It doesn't matter uh, what else happened. That anything happened. That is the number one story that the world is interested in. Holy shit. How stupid was that? I, I tell you what, I actually felt bad for Chris Rock. And then being able to stand up there because, you know... Um, a lesser man would have, you know, wanted to stomp his ass right there. I know I would have wanted to do that. I mean, that's that's the normal response. But he, he fucking kept it together. Uh, I mean, Chris Rock probably would have gotten the fuck kicked out of him by Will Smith. But to, for him to stand up there and to roll with it like that as best as he could, and then he said, come on, it was a G.I. Jane joke. Holy shit. That was ugly. I don't, uh, and, and then everybody kissing his ass like that afterwards. Fuck that guy. What a bunch of clowns. And then for all the other people who were getting awards, no one gives a shit about anything anymore. I guess there's some uh, fantastic film called Coda that won Best Picture, which I think stands for Children of Deaf Adults. I, th I just thought it was the Led Zeppelin album. But that was supposed to be a fantastic film. You know, typical Oscar-worthy, best picture fair. Um, and then there was the other uh, film that was up for The Power of the Dog. And, in fact, the best picture um, was a film that was on Apple TV. God, I got to get that. But just a fucking shit show. I cannot get over this. What a fucking clown. Um, I want to see if I can get Will Smith's full acceptance speech. I, I know that um, it isn't available. Like the, I haven't been able to get the whole thing online. Just like bits and pieces of it. Let's see. Maybe this is it. I don't think this is just like a written form. Um.
because what I played for you, it didn't, it was only, he was only kind of like referencing what the incident was in, in a veiled way. But, um, let's see, I'll pick it up here. I'm being called on in life to love people and protect people and to be a river to my people. What a thing to say. What a, what an, after such an, after you showed your ass so bad, you can't drop something that sounds like it came out of the mouth of Martin Luther King Jr. Something actual, actually poignant. I know to do what we do, you've got to be able to take abuse. You've got to be able to have people talk crazy about you. Well, that's not what that was. In this business, you got to be able to have people disrespecting you and you've got to smile. You've got to pretend like that's okay. What I love was Denzel said to me a few minutes ago, he said at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. I want to be a vessel for love. I want to say thank you to Venus and Serena. They're like, oh, fuck. We're sorry that you played our dad. That's what our dad used to do to us. Bam, right in the face. And the entire Williams family for entrusting me with your story. That's... (laughs) I'm thinking about this. Which one of you said men in black eye? <laughs> uh, that's what I want to do. I want to be an ambassador of that kind of love, care, and concern. I want to apologize to the Academy. I want to apologize to all my fellow nominees. He did not apologize to Chris Rock. This is a beautiful moment, and I'm not crying for winning an award. It's not about winning an award for me. It's about being able to shine a light on all of the people. Uh, Tim White, producer, and Trevor White, producer, and Zach Balin, writer, and Sanaya, and Demi, and Aujanue, and the entire cast and crew of King Richard, and Venus, and Serena, the entire Williams family. Art imitates life. I look like the crazy father, just like they said about Richard Williams. But love will make you do crazy things. Ah, okay. Yeah, love will make you do crazy things. Like, let your wife get plowed by whoever the fuck she wants to get plowed by, you piece of shit. Fuck you. And my mother. A lot in this moment is really complicated for me, but to my mother, she didn't want to come out. Yeah, the mom's like, I'm glad I didn't. I didn't want to see you smack the shit out of my favorite comedian, you asshole. She's had her knitting crew, who she's in Philly watching with. Can you imagine that? She's sitting there knitting. Hey, Beatrice, your son just smacked the shit out of God, that little black guy. Being able to love and care for my mother, my family, my wife. I'm taking up too much time. Thank you for this honor. Thank you for the moment. And thank you on behalf of Richard and Oracine and the entire Williams family. Thank you. I hope the Academy invites me back. Thank you. What a mess. Yeah. Um. So he made it worse with this bold statement the stupid acceptance speech god was that great kenny says will smith basically said i love everyone but chris rock no fuck that guy uh their open relationship has nothing to do with this but seriously no well yeah i know but you see this is how it goes okay when you when things when everything goes out the window Uh, you, you, you kind of, um, throw things out there like that. Smith's next parental acting gig, Joe Jackson says, Josh, very strong. You guys are on point today. Oh, Tyler says, what a fucking hypocrite. Cole says, pretend to cry while you read it, man. Well done, you guys. Somewhere, Carlton is having PTSD seizures. My God. Poor Chris Rock. Jesus. All right, there you go. So uh, that's what I woke up to today. Was this hilarity? Jeez. So welcome, welcome to the show. So glad you're here. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I tell you what, I had one of the best weekends. I mean, it was really spectacular. Uh, and, and a weekend where, I mean, there was nonsense like that. But in all honesty, I mean, Taylor Hawkins is dead. And that that's horrible. It's uh, this guy, a shining light um, 
And uh, I, uh, fuck, that was that really bummed me out. And I barely even like the Foo Fighters. I just know that every time I would see video of that guy, he always looked like he was having a fucking great time, you know, like really happy. And that's one of the things that I remember. I was uh, fortunate enough back in the old radio days, uh, uh, JT, our program director for a Foo Fighters show at Van Andel Arena. He says, Greg, Chris, Eric, you get to interview Dave Grohl before the show. And there's like a backstage area and the microphones were set up and we just sat in and waited and they were on time. Dave walks in on time. As, as you know how you, how you oftentimes see Dave Grohl and he's always just seems like a regular dude. It was just like that. And he walks in and goes, hey, fellas. And then Taylor Hawkins walks in and they sit down and it was nice, man. I don't remember the specifics of what we talked about. I remember I was like, wow, this is this is pretty great. And um I always admire when um, super famous people come in and make the people who are interviewing yeah, real comfortable. And they, they did that. It was great. And that was probably like 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, I remember just uh, really loving that. But uh, more on that in a bit. That was, uh, you know, real, real uh, downer, real bummer, man. Um, I saw a joke, too, that I could not believe. Ben, ben sent it along. I don't think Ben wrote it, you fucker. But uh, keep in mind that this show happens each and every weekday right here. And also, I do a Patreon bonus podcast for another 40 or so, uh, maybe a little less, depending on the day. Uh, Afterwards, on Patreon, which is a fancy word for a paywall, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. I put a ton of content up there, excuse me, each and every week for five bucks a month or 10 bucks a month, you name it. Five bucks a month is just the audio. And 10 bucks a month is all the audio, all the video, and all the live streams. Thank you so much. Uh, I suggest just if you're thinking, if you're on the fence, maybe just try it out for just one month, you know? And then if, if you don't like it, then you're, you know, you're out five, 10 bucks, no big deal. Um, but you can cancel at any time. It's very easy to do that. And then you get the rest of the month. So whatever. Uh, thank you so much. If not, that's cool too. I work really hard at it and it helps keep the lights on. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on this show though, it is uh, dominated by sponsorships. And uh, my friends over at Johnson Carpet One Floor and Home want to remind you that they still have this monumentally massive sale going on where you can save 20, 30, and 40% at everything that is in stock. They are looking to move all of the product out of the warehouse. The discount outlet is just down the street from the main showroom, Chicago Drive, in uh, Granville, Michigan, right behind the Little Caesars. Looks like a big friggin' bull barn with a small red sign on it that says Johnson's go in there, say hello to Kent, drop the E at a U and say, Hey, Eric Zane sent me. He's like, ah, come on in. We got big sales because they've got a ton of inventory that they need to make room for. That's why they're having a massive month of March sale. So go in there, get the flooring that you're going to have. Uh, my friends at, um, um, I'm sorry, Bennett flooring installation install later on. Um, get it and then you're good to go that you won't find a lower price all year than what they have this month at johnson's carpet one floor and home discount outlet i saw joe martinez this weekend more on that in a second him and his lovely family my god a and e heating and cooling i know it's 17 degrees out right now but geez oh pete's uh the time is coming when you will be uh needing to uh get that air conditioner tuned up Okay, and A and E heating and cooling wants to be part of that. Reach out to them. 616-516-8579 for A and E heating and cooling. And if you need anything for an after hours service call or perhaps some scheduled maintenance, you can do that too. Um, Yeah, there you go. 616-516-8579. All right. Uh oh, we might be scraping the bottom of the joke barrel. Sometimes, because you guys, you th- you think, hey, I'm getting a good pop for these jokes. I'll just keep writing jokes. It's, e no, you might want to just ripcord when you write. Will Smith can tune up, tune it up for you if Joe is busy. You're suggesting based on the news last night that Will Smith can now uh, uh, tune up a furnace. That doesn't make any sense, 
and it's stupid. So I'm just letting you know that you were doing great, but when you keep going to the well, take it from me, it's going to, you mean, you're, you, you got to move on at some point, Jason, you know? So yeah, eh. seriously, quit while you're ahead. That's you know, less is more. See how that works. All right. Whew. I still think Will Smith though was thought it was hilarious. And the only reason why he went up there is because his wife said, you know, get your ass up there and kick his ass or else I'm going to go get three more fresh dicks and you're going to have to talk about it. All right. Aram says tune up as in fighting joke went over your head. No, I got it. It wasn't funny. No, I, I, I definitely got it and you're not funny either. So be quiet. All right. Joke went over your head. No, it didn't. It was a shitty joke. And now the attention's on you, Aram. Shut the fuck up. Blue Frost IT, the managed IT service provider for this show. 616-200-8550. Hey, can Blue Frost IT be the managed IT service provider too? Is that, hey, yeah, ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, if uh, your business needs an IT upgrade, call upon Blue Frost IT. They will sit down with you for a complimentary consultation and figure out what's up. You might need to do that because if you just go out on your own and just start buying shit, you're probably going to buy the wrong thing too much or too little. Time is money. Reach out to my friends at Blue Frost IT. They'll tell you what you need to buy for your business. They'll help you make make that purchase, an educated one, and help you set it all up, and then they will be the managed IT service provider for your business. That's exactly what happened to me. Started out as a simple consultation. Uh, Blue Frost helped me get everything I needed. In fact, um, my computer needed a little special uh, treatment, so... Uh, my friends at Blue Frost built it for me and then set it all up, told me how this works. It's a little bit more than just plugging a thing in and going. There's uh, a lot that goes into it. And if I ever get in the weeds, because I have a, they are a managed IT service provider, I pay them a little bit each month, and then they, if there's ever any trouble, I know I have an insurance policy. I have backup with Blue Frost IT. Taylor Hawkins dead at 50. Holy shit. And the... Um, it seems like uh, the world the world is kind of um, you know kind of holding their breath as to uh, what the hell is going on here, and I don't uh, I don't I don't claim to know anything. Uh, they they I did find out that um, they they did an autopsy and found that his heart was uh, twice the weight of the heart of a man. Uh, his age, uh, I think a normal heart is like 300 grams and his was like 600 grams or maybe a little bit more. So, uh, and they haven't, nothing is conclusive, not a damn thing, but you know, pretty much everybody thought what the fuck when, um, they found out that there was a, a ton of, uh, strange substances in his, uh, in his system. Uh, THC, who gives a shit about that? Um, I, you know, I, I, I honestly, um, just, it says Colombian authorities found marijuana, antidepressants, opioids, heroin, and at least 10 different substances found. All right. So I'm trying to piece this all together. Uh, marijuana, whatever antidepressants who isn't on antidepressants opioids well you know i mean there's opioids in in the nfk's body it takes five milligrams uh, four times a day heroin Ugh, okay all right and uh and then it talks about at least 10 different substances found but it only lists marijuana antidepressants opioids and heroin now that's People will draw their own conclusions with that. Um, who knows? I, you know, I, stupid. 
Um, he was complaining of chest pains. Heartbroken fans gathered outside the building to mourn um, the, the sensational drummer behind international Foo Fighters hits such as My Hero, Learn to Fly, and Best of You. According to those close to him, the death could be related to the consumption of drugs. The Metropolitan Police of Bogota told El Tiempo hours after the drummer's body was found. Well, that's pretty bold to just come out and say. Uh, People are majorly bummed out. A cop said that a, quote, cocaine-looking powder was seen in the hotel room. A national newspaper in Bogota, El Tiempo, reported that authorities found hallucinogenic drugs, but no signs of violence in the luxury hotel room. Colombian authorities found an empty beer can, an open bottle of vodka, a Coca-Cola bottle, and some other articles being analyzed by authorities. The world of music and Bogota are in mourning over the death of the great Taylor Hawkins. Bogota Mayor Claudia Lopez said in a release to his family and friends, she doesn't know who the hell he is. To the Foo Fighters and all of his fans, we send a hug and condolences. Uh, Hawkins, an electrifying performer with a stage presence that projected from behind his drum kit, had a history of known drug use. He overdosed on heroin in 01 and spent a week in a coma just four years after joining the band. I did not know that. Uh, The emergency center received a report about a patient with pain in the chest in a hotel in the north of the city, according to a release issued Saturday by the Bogota Secretary of Health which noted that the organization sent an ambulance to to the location. However, when the teams from the security of health arrived, they found another emergency responder from the company EMI. The healthcare professional who attended to the emergency said he performed all reanimation maneuvers, but he did not receive a response and the patient was declared dead. Uh, The celebrated drummer enjoyed time. With an adoring young fan just 72 hours before his death. Yes, yeah, some kid, a uh, nine-year-old kid who uh, uh, loves him and loves the band. She was like outside of the place and she like knew where his room was. She's like, oh, come on down, say hi to me, please. I love you so much, Emma Sophia Peralta. She started an online campaign to meet her idol on the Paraguay leg of the Foo Fighters South American tour. Her wishes were realized Tuesday. Today, we took her drums to play in front of the hotel, and look who came out at her call. Her father posted uh, on Twitter. There you go. Let me let me show you this. This is this is that moment. Look at, she's like so happy. And there he is, Taylor Hawkins. This is like one of the last known pictures of the guy. Holy fuck. That poor kid has got to be devastated. Can you, oh, how'd you like nine-year-old girl? And you got to, I mean, that's, she's so much in love with the guy. She, she brings her drums. She wants to do like Nandy, you know, uh, who had got into that drum battle with Dave Grohl. So this is just awful. Motherfuck. Um, dad says dreams do come true. I feel bad for that kid. Uh, the Foo Fighters backed out of their scheduled Friday performance. They said there's been a medical issue. People are like, boy, what's going on? You know, uh, the band played Lollapalooza Chile on March 18th and Lollapalooza Argentina on March 20th. They canceled their headlining performance at Lollapalooza Brazil, obviously, which was stated, uh, slated for Sunday. My show is dedicated to Taylor Hawkins. Miley Cyrus posted on Instagram with a photo of the drummer before headlining the Saturday leg of the three-day music festival in Sao Paulo. Tributes to Hawkins poured in from across musical generations. He was a friend and one of the most uplifting and inspiring people we've ever known, wrote wrote John Fogarty. Holy shit. A great drummer and a wonderful human being. You know there's going to be a meme of of Will Smith smacking the shit out of, uh, out of what's his face. Chris rock. No, you know what? I can't even do it. If I'm going to sit there and bust your balls about too many jokes, then that's, that's a stupid joke. 
Uh, so I'm yelling at myself now. That's just fucking dumb. What an asshole. My God. Rest in peace to Taylor Hawkins. I did see this, though. Ben sent it along. I read this to Mays at Paintball, who very sweetly gave a couple of paintball scholarships. Could not play because he hurt his knee. Right now, Mays is like, don't do it, Eric. Well, I didn't write it. I did not write this. Fuck. Ben... Uh, sent me the joke that Ari Shafir wrote, who Ari Shafir's thing is the closer to the tragedy, the bigger the joke will be. I would never have the nerve to say this. Shafir wrote, there is no greater tragedy than when the second best drummer in a band dies. <laughs> but um, <tss. laughs> You asshole fucking dick I wrote to Ben I wrote holy fuck that's awesome and I wrote I would not have had the balls to post that and he says same I said would you be mad if I sc- took a screenshot of it and said that you did this he goes no I wouldn't uh, yeah I get it it's funny I know I can't I can't say that that's not funny but my god Speaking of which, the Eric Zane memes have really been going fucking crazy lately. And I think that there might have been one associated with the passing of Taylor Hawkins. I don't, I'm not sure. I think Jason, not Jason uh, Mays, not Jason Schaefer, I think it's Jason Rogers, was a dick bag who for some reason took an image of me and said, hey, let's have fun with this. And put a smiling Eric Zane with thumbs up in all sorts of stupid, awkward situations. And, uh, <laughs> okay. In fact, let me just unpack a little bit of what is uh, on Zany Action United right now. <laughs> Jawan Howard watching the Oscars with um, the scene from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when Leonardo DiCaprio's got that 1970s beer can with a smoke in his hand uh, pointing at the screen. Pellerito's all all over it. Thumbs up, Eric Zane, after Will Smith's... (laughs) Look at the look on Will's... on uh, uh, fucking Chris Rock's face. He's actually going, oh! Oh! So fantastic. I want you to know that any of you that are suggesting that Will Smith hitting Chris Rock was fake, I want to fight you. Uh, Oh, my God. My hamster in the bag holding up a peace sign with me thumbs up. Assholes. And, uh, okay, there's one with me seated with Putin. And then this one pissed people off. Holy shit. So something happened on Facebook, and for a change, I was not involved. Taylor Hawkins uh, with me, thumbs up. Come on. Stevie says too soon. Sam the Jew wrote, okay, I just laughed out loud. Scott wrote, most of these I find funny. This one was not. He had a wife and kids that are completely devastated at the moment. Thomas says, I agree. Pretty bad taste. Mike says, what a D-bag. I wrote, oh my God, horrible, but I found it funny. Here is Patriot Nick drunk. I guess he got hammered on the Zaniac Zoom and passed out. Uh, Yes, yet another reason for me not to join the Zaniac Zoom. You want to know how not fun it is for people who don't drink to watch uh, people get fucking shit-faced? Yet another reason that I will not be on the Zaniac Zooms. Um, How about this one? With my wife, myself, the Joe Biden, I did that, but it's me, you sick fucks. 
Um, there was another one that was really terrible taste. And the only reason why I'm showing it is because a Jewish man put it together. Here's me in front of Pine Rest Christian Mental Health Facility. Assholes. Uh, me laughing at the Hindenburg. Me with uh, uh, E.T. Me with Jeffrey Epstein. In front of a Nazi death camp is probably the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Come on. That is Auschwitz, you assholes. Horrible. It's You're unstoppable. There's nothing I can do about that. Okay. I need to take a leak again. I'll be back. Thanks again to the sponsors that have uh, made this show go round. You guys are spectacular, and uh, well, all of you are spectacular. Thank you so much. Um, the open and the live stream of the show was brought to you by Mario Flores Lakeshore Team of Van Dyke Mortgage 231-332-6505. Get a mortgage from Mario 231-332-6505. 6505. Anywhere in the USA, he can service you with the exception of South Carolina, Maine, Alaska, and Hawaii. Get a mortgage. If uh, your credit is great, this is an easy process. No problem at all. If your credit's kind of a little wonky, you're not sure, just reach out and ask. Uh, you know, sometimes life gets in the way. If that happens. Uh, Mario can help you uh, get a plan in place to get you that mortgage. He is with you for the long haul. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, Irvine's. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Putting uh, the finishing touches on a new uh, power steering uh, pump for the 07 Accord. And then, uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Thank you so much. It's good to have a, a team in place that you can trust. And that's uh, the number one thing, in my opinion. And I'm sure for a lot of people, when it comes to automotive care, having someone you, excuse me, that you can trust, 616 532 6,600. Okay. So this weekend, let me explain this to you. I, um, I was an MC for a, uh, a kind of like a, uh, it's called the spring Jubilee of hope or of giving or something like that for a charity known as well house. And wow. Um, this group gets, old homes that need a lot of TLC and they flip them and make them available for little or no cost for the, I guess you would describe it as the um, woke term is um, housing insecurity, which is just way too clumsy to me. Come on. It's the homeless. They need a place to live. Some of these uh, folks who live in a shelter for them to have their address as a homeless shelter and then try to get a job if they're turning their life around. Because let's say you're somebody on the street who um, struggling with drug addiction. Okay. Um, you know, where do you begin? You're starving. You have no place to live. You're addicted to drugs. Um, well House is part of an army of volunteers and supporters in the private sector who try to help these folks. Now, ultimately, they got to be wanting the help. So the outreach team goes out there and tries to, you know, uh, make some headway with that one-on-one face-to-face conversations with somebody who might be flying a sign at a corner. I mean, it gets down to that, uh, that intricate and then they start this process. So if some of them respond, some don't and, but the ones that do, they can get them and do one of these houses. They have 15 houses right now and they're just fantastic houses. They're, they've been redone. They just look great. And, um, so the goal is to get more houses, keep doing this, end the homeless problem, and um, get these people a, uh, a base to live in, you know? So my job is to keep this uh, uh, little banquet moving, if you will, okay? So I've done this a million and one times, and it's uh, all I need really is just a, what's called a run of show. And when you have the run of show, how do you, how do the organizers of this event, what do you see happening? And they usually write it out. Sometimes it's, it's, I've been at some where it's just scribbled on a piece of paper. As long as I can get an idea of how it's supposed to lay out in my head, shouldn't be any problem. Um, and I'm really new to the charity. Joe Martinez introduced me to these folks. 
he's the one who does the uh, service work on all the heating and cooling units um, uh, for all of these homes. He you know, volunteers his time with his family who are part of his business. So Joe and, I, Joe and his family are at one table and Diana and I are at another table and uh, with some, some other folks that we just met. It was great. Um, so, you know, uh, my job is to, okay, welcome. This is so awesome. Spring Jubilee. And we're so glad you're here. Okay. Let's celebrate. And, uh, here to say a few words is so-and-so who uh, runs a charity and dude comes up and he says some nice words and yeah, it's all that stuff. And then there's some, uh, there's going to be some, um, people who've worked extra hard in the past year. They, they get like an award. So that's nice. You know, and it's all good. And the folks from Kids Food Basket were there, which is great. And by the way, we, we need to do that. Well, we did it once, and I, then I haven't done it since. But the, I need this to go but to the Eric Zane Joe podcast front burner. And I can uh, count on all my fingers and toes how many times I've said this. But we need to schedule something, and it's all up to me. So I will do this because I talked to Bridget Clark Whitney, who – um, of course, is uh, the the main cog at Kids Food Basket. And I said, this is going to happen again. It's going to be awesome. But anyway, so um, that's all going great. And then there's one particular moment when there's these three gentlemen that are going to come up. And for like five to ten, well, no, about ten minutes, I have to interview them in front of all of these folks. And uh, this this group of three are like the volunteer leaders who are, have this boots on the ground vibe to what they do and getting, uh, bridging the gap between what they do at Wellhouse, uh, wellhousegr.org, if you'd be so inclined, and the homeless community. And um, now I, I need you to know that uh, I did not embarrass myself in this one. The, I know you're expecting Eric made an asshole out of himself, but for a change, I didn't. I don't think I did. Um, I'm trying to rack my brain for moments of awkwardness, but I don't think that happened. Anyway, I'm at a, I'm like a moderator. I'm at a podium and these three gentlemen. Progressive presents forest metaphors about bundling your home and auto In sports. Three goals is a hat trick. And when you bundle your home and auto with progressive, you get a hat trick of great savings and round the clock protection. So you might be thinking, wait, that's two things. A hat trick is three. But in this metaphor, great savings counts as two goals, and so does round-the-clock protection. So it's like four goals, and that's more than three. It's basic math. Forced Metaphors, presented by Progressive. Bundle and protect today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discount not available in all states or situations. One to my left um, are there, and um, I'm having a conversation with them um, in front of the group. It's probably two, three hundred people there uh, about all the things that uh, take place when they're on the street. So no big deal. And um, I noticed that as soon as I started, I'm looking to my left and they're uh, seated um, like uh, in a row. And uh, I'm like, so, uh, so and so, tell me about uh, what you do and what you see out on the street. And as soon as I start, I hear talking behind me at a table, loud. Um, almost like everyone's paying attention, <clears throat> excuse me, but there's a conversation going and it's cutting through the room like a knife and it's distracting. And in my head, while I'm looking at these three, it's directly behind me in the area where my wife is seated. Like my wife is at her table and she didn't do anything wrong in this either. And then I know it's coming from that area and I can hear it. And then, so the conversation is, is going on and these gentlemen are talking for extended time. And I'm looking, I'm actually looking right now while I do this show to, to, to that side. And I can still hear the conversation. It's laughing and, and, uh, it's, it's one guy. I hear one man voice and it, it won't stop. So this goes on for a little bit of time. And then finally, whilst one of the gentlemen is answering a question about whatever it is they do, I turn my head slowly all the way around. I see Diana is looking at a guy who's drunk, making an asshole out of himself. I keep turning. Now I've turned my head completely around. And I'm looking directly at the guy like I am to you while this dude is talking. And this guy sees me looking at him 
and he his radar locks on my eyes. And now I'm just looking at him like this. Message received. He didn't say shit for the rest of the time. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to say I'm some intimidating badass, but humiliation goes a long way because the, uh, there was visceral reactions to when the people that who saw me in the crowd turn and look at this guy, they're all like, uh-oh, fucking Will Smith, you know? And uh, he didn't say a fucking word for the rest of it. So message received. So I was like, thank God, you know, I just want to get through this. I just want to have these nice people say what the hell they're doing here. People actually do care what the fuck these guys say. Shut up. Um, so it worked. I was very happy with that. I go back after we're done. I say, Diane, I go, what happened there? She goes, yeah, he was a drunk asshole. He wouldn't shut the fuck up. And I gave him one of my looks. I go, did you see what I did? She goes, yeah, he left right after that. The, the, the wife or the girl he was with, um, she brought him and she was so mortified. She said, let's go. And they got up and fucking left as soon as the thing was done. So I was like, yes, yes. Oh my God. Incredible. I mean, the the nerve, how can you not? I don't care how shit faced you are. Maybe he wasn't shit faced. I sure hope he was shit faced because what a fucking asshole. Oh God. Um, you're going to hear more about Wellhouse. I got the eye of the tiger now about Wellhouse. Um, this is a, an organization that if you don't have one dime to spare, if you can hold a paintbrush, you can do this. Can you imagine a Zaniac home fixer upper day on like some day on the weekend where we just got to go paint? You guys know that I'm excellent at painting things. So maybe I shouldn't take part in it. I don't know. Um, I should say, Diana, we should have them come to our house and do it for, <laughs> for us. No, stay the fuck away. I'm going to do this. I promise you I'm going to do this. But it was awesome. Great, great group of people. Raised a ton of money for Wellhouse. If you want more information, I want you to check it out. Uh, Wellhousegr.com. GR. No, I'm sorry, .org. Wellhousegr.org. Fun, fun group of people. HVAC 71. That's got to be Joe Martinez. Uh, because he references Diana wants to have sex on the beach with me. She, she actually said that to him because that was the drink that everybody was drinking there. Unbelievable. Joe Martinez and the folks from Remy Halo donated a Remy Halo. Now that's an $800 unit and it was up for, um, auction, silent auction. It went for $401. Joe installs it at your house. I couldn't believe that. I don't think, and I even took the time to explain, hey, you got a bid on this thing. This thing is awesome. This is what it does. Um, Also, uh, Joe's daughter, Maria, and his son-in-law, hold on, not Jason, David, they bid on a night at the Embassy Suites Hotel. And I'm there announcing the winners of the silent auction. And they're stoked because they they won it. They know they won it. But the problem was there was two pages of bids and I didn't turn the page because the first bid on the second page was David's. So I gave it to the second highest bidder. And I, I was like, oh no, I'm so sorry, man embarrassing that 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 act i actually felt bad about that because they thought they were going to get uh a night at this ho- super great hotel for a uh a cheaper than normal price on the silent auction my bad man i owe you i don't know what i owe you but uh, it was great also part of the weekend get this i had a limo job on sunday and man, this sucked. This was horrible. Um, the folks at Affordable said, can you do Sunday? You got to be in Detroit 
at not for a 9:30 a.m. pickup at the airport. You're picking up um, several members of a university track team. I am not saying who they are. Actually, I didn't find out that it was a university track team till a little later. And but it honestly wouldn't have affected things. And frankly, I'm I'm still I still would have done it. I I love to help out um, the folks over at Affordable. They've been very good to me. They go, can you do this job? Nobody wants a job. I said, I'll do that job. Give me that job. All I got to do is jump in the uh, 14 passenger transit van. Uh, got to get up at uh, 5 a.m. Get uh, over to the joint. Get over to the garage. Take off. Off I go. So I had to get to bed early. Yet another reason why I couldn't be caught dead on the Zaniac Zoom to see uh, Nick drink too much. God. Um, so, you know, I'm driving. And uh, I stop at a rest area. And I go, I think I'm going to check out what uh, what I'm picking this track team up from. What they were doing. And I found out where in the U.S. they were. And um, how they did. And there was one uh, athlete in particular who won the 1500 you got like like a whole a ton of college athletes and she won the 1500 at a fucking really fast time i think it's like four minutes and 50 seconds like that incredible that's like the mile that might be a little bit under a mile i don't know but uh it's the 1500 so okay great and um you know uh we got i get to the airport and um, I, I'm texting with the coach. Hey, this is my plan. I'll see. And everything goes off beautifully. And it's a madhouse at arrivals where I'm at, you know, and you can't be, you can't, once you get there and stop, you better have your party walking out the door, get them in and then boom, gone. You can't, you can't wait because there's a ton of cops that'll kick your ass in Romulus, Michigan airport police. So I'm kind of like timing it. I'm making loops around the arrival uh, area and then finally, I get the text. I go, okay, here I come. And you're she, They were standing out there for 90 seconds. I pull up, load all their bags in, and uh, one of the bags was hammers, like the hammer throw, you know, like Thor. It, heavy as shit. I lift all this stuff. I go, and then I said the thing. I'm like, I'm planning. I go, which one of you won the 1500? And uh, this one young lady goes, oh, my God, I did. She, she won the whole thing. I go, Congratulations. Great effort. And great effort to everybody, too. Nice job out there. I, I don't know. Whatever. Just say something. Go, oh, thank you. That's so nice. They're college kids. This is young women. Coach gets in. I help her in. I go, Coach, welcome. Welcome. Okay, I'll get you to your destination safely. It's all the professionalism you have to have. Okay, so uh, two and a half hours there. And then I, I go, you ladies must be starving. They go, we are. Can you stop? I go, of course. Where do you want to go? They go, here. And I uh, I see the address. I plug it in, and off we go to Dunkin' Donuts. And uh, I, I get out. I open the door for them. I open the door to the Dunkin'. They go, do you want anything? I go, no, I'm good. I pack my lunch. Thank you, though. I wait inside, hold the door open for them, get them back into the van. Off they go. And we take off doing our thing. Uh, perfectly professional drive all the way back. That's another two hours. I've now spent uh, hours in this uh, in this van. Nothing but top level service. Uh, incredible distance between me and the car in front of me. High winds. It's a very windy, cold day. But man, we kicked ass. I was so happy. And then I pulled up to my destination. I unload all the bags. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful taking you to your destination today, Coach. Have a great week, and I hope you guys, I wish you continued success. This is when they usually get, she gave me a fucking $5 bill. Thank you. Thank you. And I go, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, you, you, this is the key moment. You can't, you can't do it. You're the face of the company. You can't show that you're pissed. I go, oh, my God. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> it should have been, uh, honestly, I would have. it would have been appropriate if that was about $60 more, maybe 100 <sighs> I should have known. Athletes, coaches, nobody's making any money there. 
the, the, for sure the athletes aren't going to give me any money. They're all broke. You know? Five bucks. So I'm like, oh, shit. Um, and, you know, on most jobs that are a shuttle, they have a built-in tip. This is not that job. But they do have a plan in place for a massive built-in to the price tip. This was not the case, though. So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. This is the risk you run. This is that slight risk of getting stiff. Now, it wasn't a total stiff. Uh, there have been one or two times that I've gotten a total stiff job. Other times, it's been unbelievable. Like $200, here you go. But this was, that's the risk you run. It's gambling. So I'm like, fuck. Now, they pay a great hourly wage. Let's be honest here. It's already, a, I made a great wage. I'm not, I'm, I'm telling you a story. I'm not complaining. I don't want you to get the idea that this is a bad place to work because too often or many times I've said, Hey, go get a job at affordable limousine and party bus. Hell you can see they still sponsor this show. But in this one case that does happen, that is a reality. You can get fucked right in the butt. So I took it right in the keister. And then she goes, can you text me? that you got that and that'll serve as my receipt when I turn it into the university. And I'm like, ah, I go, sure, sure. No problem. Excuse, I type out, please excuse the informality of this, but this will serve as a receipt that I received $5 from coach. Thank you for your, uh, oh God. That happens. So I drove home. That's it. Kyle writes, come work as a driver and get fucked in the ass. <laughs> Chris says, shit, she's getting reimbursed. It should have been at least $100. Pellerito, Eric turned into Cleveland bus driver after that tip. I did not. Should have told her the text would have cost her. All right. Um, Jason just recently did a job, um, out of state. He had to take a, um, an athletic team to a location out of state for like extended time, like a couple days. And Jason says, that's a job that you get premium pay. And it's true. You get a ton of cash for those. You don't have to worry about a tip in those because you're getting paid so well. I don't know. Oh, right. Right. No big deal. Flush it, move on. There, was, there have been times, I've, I don't know what's worse, five or zero. Five kind of feels, no, zero's worth. That be, or zero is worse because then they're actually saying, you, you don't deserve shit. I have, uh, I've never warranted that low of a tip, though. I've always been respectful. I've never been rude in any way. It's always been top-level service. But this does happen from time to time. Not the end of the world. Usually it's great. I'll say that. Okay. This weekend. Um, I mean, that was an experience to be sure. Uh, but I talked about the good time I had at the, uh, at the charity fundraiser. And then Saturday, uh, my son Jim has become addicted to bowling. And he's terrible at it. Um, that's the addictive personality of my family because of me. Jim went bowling once with his son, Grayson, my grandson. So now he wants to do it like every freaking weekend. So after bowling once, he goes and buys a bowling ball. I go, wow, okay. Wow, you're really into it. Sounds good to me. And then uh, I find out Diana says, hey, Jim invited me to go bowling with him and Grayson. Do you want to go? Now I'm getting set to uh, scrub the bathroom floor. No joke. I had to scrub the bathroom floor and scrub the uh, inside of the shower. She goes, the shower is gross. Will you do that? I go, yes, I will. Yes, I will, honey. I will do that. I will clean that out. So I'm like preparing. And uh, she goes, you want to go bowling? I go, well, I got to do this. She goes, skip it. We haven't done anything in a while with the grandkids. This is a great opportunity. Let's not let, let it slip by. 
I go, no problem. I go, that's a great idea. So it can wait. It can wait. That's a great way to look at it. That can wait. You can't, you can't let this opportunity slip by. So off we go. Um, in three games of bowling, I had one strike. One strike. Um, I'm really shitty at it. I bowled, I think, a 110, a 134, and a 123. Which actually, talking about it, it doesn't sound that miserable. But uh, I I love bowling. I want to do it more often. My son, he throws the bowling ball with two hands. And I'm like, what what are you doing? He's got a 14-pound ball, and he'll, um, he, he holds, he puts his fingers, but not the thumb in the thing. And then he goes up and he's, he like runs up there and then brings it back with two hands and then flings it. And then he likes spinning it. So it's, there's no technique. He just throws it as hard as he fucking can. And I'm like, are you sure that's right? And uh, then if he does it with one hand, his arm goes way out. He could use a Kevin Kuyper's bowling lesson. He really could. I mean, he was terrible. Um, but all in all, it was a great time. We had the greasy pizza. A dude walked up to me and said, Eric Zane. And I go, hey, how are you? And this is, this is a terrible thing because you all know how I don't know anybody's fucking name. And um, I still don't know this dude's name, but I know I know him. And he comes walking up to me, and uh, he starts having a conversation with me. And I was uh, under the impression that I should know who he is. And this is, he's talking to me like I've seen him dozens of times. And he's right. Because um, I'm doing the old, oh, yeah? Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, oh, my God, hey, it's good to see you. Yeah. Okay, cool. How's everybody doing? You got to keep it generic like that. If you keep it generic, you can navigate this. I go, yeah, man. Well, tell the tell everybody I said hi. Okay. Yeah, man. Okay, see you, guy. All right, buddy. See you, pal. Yeah, man. Bye. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that was. And then it dawns on, and then uh, I'm it 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 hits me. I figured it out. It was um um. Jim DeGroote's son. And I think it's, and uh, you don't know who that is, but he works over at Riverbend Body Shop. Remember the sponsor? Body Shop sponsor, Riverbend Body Shop. They haven't been on in a while. That's DeGroote. And I'm like, oh, fuck, it hit me later. And so I'm looking all around for him in the facility and I can't find him. And I'm like, do I even want to say anything? And I'm like, well, you played it off okay, so he might not be aware that you didn't know who he was, but it's funnier to actually engage him and talk about it, so I'm going to engage him. So I finally see him. I go, hey, man, and I still don't know his name. I go, if, uh, if you know, I got to find this out. I should just fucking call him. Hold on a second here. Riverbend. Riverbend Body Shop. Everybody there knows me on a first name basis. Good morning, Riverbend Body Shop. This is Kim. May I help you? Kim, this is Eric Zane. How are you? Good. How are you, Eric? I'm well. I have uh, something embarrassing. I ran into uh, DeGroote at bowling this weekend. Okay. But I didn't. I couldn't remember where he was, where I knew him from. Uh oh. <laughs> what is his first name? Was it Zach? It's Zach. There's Zach and yes. Matt. I, one of them. I think they both went. Okay. Um, and that's Jim's son, right? Correct. Both of them are. If they were both there. Is Zach there? I'm doing my podcast right now. I got to talk to him. Okay. Hold on, just a second. Thank you. Today is this Oasis? No, it isn't. I thought it was Oasis. Hey, 
Thanks for holding this, is Zach. Zach, it's Eric. Hey, Eric, how you doing today? So I'm doing okay, but I, I was just telling the story about how I didn't know who the hell you were at bowling. <laughs> Uh, I must have a very memorable face, Eric. No, you do. It's just I'm an idiot. And then I also I'm like, God, why why I should know this and I and then I and then I forgot your name. So it was oh. all terrible. Did 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 I give you the impression that I didn't I mean, did you figure it out? When I when I first walked up to you? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. You, I was giving you the vibe that I didn't know who you were. Right. A little bit, yeah. So I figured ah, he probably has enough people come up to him and um, no, say hi and stuff like that. No, no. So. I don't want you to give me an excuse. That that right. that is that is inexcusable, Zach. For I'm, I mean, uh, I've been right. I've been coming to see you for years. You've been fixing our cars. It's been it's been quite a while. I think that it's uh, it was because you were. I mean, if I had seen you in the facility where you work, where right. I, I oh, only yeah. see you, for sure. That's my only excuse. How did you bowl? Not very good. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Well, it was it was uh, it was ugly on my end too. I just wanted to call well, and, and tell you hi and yeah. say hi. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate that. It's been way too long since I cracked up a car and, and seen you. But Diana uh, told you when she saw you that it's bound to happen sometime soon. Right. No, it's uh, it's a good thing when people don't have to come visit us at work. So. Right. Right. It means uh, we get told every day, "Hey, I hope I don't see you again for a long time," which we totally understand because yeah, once you're at a body shop, usually uh, something bad has happened or. Um, yeah, just not an enjoyable thing to have to go through. So we understand when people don't want to come see us at work. Very much, very much so. Okay, tell David I'll be calling on him. I want him to get uh, back on the podcast. Sounds good. I'll let him know. Thank you, Zach. Thanks, Eric. Have a good day. You too. Oh, God. I had no idea who he was. Well, there you go. He uh, He got the impression that I had no idea who he was. So that's pretty much what I thought happened. So embarrassing. Uh, then I posted the video of Diana. Um, God, you got to see this. I have to show you this. This is uh, Diana doing the stupid uh, uh, dance dance revolution game. All right. Give me a second here. It's <laughs> Chris. Look, I already have 78 comments on the Chris Rock thing. That's unheard of. Side note. Let us, uh, hold on a second. Let me open this up here. Let us, uh, revel in this hit by Red Wings rookie Moritz Sider. This is what he does all the time. Uh, players will try to hit him. And then when they go to hit him, he kind of puts his shoulder down and hits them first. It's called a reverse check. Look at this one. This is outstanding. More yeah, cider. Look at this hit. He reversed, hit him again. Oh, my God. I mean, they, if they're watching any games, and I guess young players don't watch wow. games that much. Look at that. Like they used to in the old days. Did he ever. Look at this hit. He reversed, hit him again. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, again, the, the, the dude for uh, the Flyers is trying to hit him, and that's the result. Fantastic. Absolutely love it. Um, okay, this is the moment I was telling you about. Diana doing Dance Dance Revolution at the bowling alley. Middle, middle of one of the platforms. There's a guy on the screen. Stand in the middle one. Stand in the middle one. Press the arrow. Why would you play a game you have no idea what you're doing? Okay. Oh, right. okay, she's supposed to stand right here in the middle. Like two people can play. One would stand here. The other would stand here. And then it lights up and you, you, you put your foot on it. She has no clue what she's doing. My son is getting pissed at her. Listen. I'll be in the middle. You're, you're, no, that's not the middle. Middle of one of the platforms. Like the guy on the screen. Stand in the middle and press the arrow. Why would you play a game you have no idea what you Oh, Christ. Mom. No, no, no. Stand in the middle. And step on him. Look at the screen, not the feet. Stick at her. Mom. Stand in the middle. He says, put both your feet in the middle. Look where she goes. She's playing hopscotch. That's not the middle. That's the back. The middle. There you go. Cross the screen and step where the arrows go. Are you seeing different arrows? <laughs> oh, the only arrows. <laughs> Hold on, Grayson. Hold on, buddy. Yeah. 
actually hitting stuff, but you're not mop. They're not lighting up according to what you're gonna hit. They light up when you step on them. <laughs> Okay, up, down, down, up. Hit them when they come in here. <laughs> what did you do? You actually wasted money. I would rather you fall for an auntie scheme than do this again. Can I have the coins now? <laughs> no, she's still trying to figure out this. Get me doing it. Okay, watch out. Watch out. Watch Jim, out. Jim's got it. Jim. Down on the. Okay, this is rough. <laughs> See? See, see, what you're, see what your son's doing? You get it now? This is so intriguing. Well, Can I the coins? Okay, now. Gracie just wants to go play video games. This lady back here was dying at this nonsense. How are you doing? Uh, is this still going? Yeah, yeah. It's over. It's it's over. Oh, you lost. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. You cleared it, though. Sorry. Go again. Oh, you might get to go again? I cleared it? All right. Just hysterical. I knew that was going to be fantastic. Literally the most basic game in existence. Melissa's laughing at Jim's quote, you're wasting money. Are you seeing different arrows? <laughs> Jason says, why would you play a game you don't understand? You mean like unprotected sex? Oh, oh no. Come on now. Come on. Oh, Jim is so aggressive about teaching his mom. Mom, mom, put your feet in the middle. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God. All right. So, fantastic weekend all the way around. Even, even limo driving um, was great. I have no complaints about that. I have no complaints about anything. It wouldn't do me any good. It would not do me any good. Okay. Boy, where the hell am I? It's been so much fun today. Thank you for being here, by the way. I appreciate that. I got to talk to you about this Biden comment. And there's another teacher incident that I need to get to in just a second. First off, tag accounting. 616-301-9516. The tax, uh, tax hobbit, Troy Ginzer. Uh, tax day is April 18th. You've got some time. All right, don't panic. Just reach out to uh, TAG Accounting, 616-301-9516 today. Bosco's Pub in Grand Rapids. Pardon me, Hudsonville, Michigan. 3380 Chicago Drive, Hudsonville, Michigan. Uh... Boy, I can't get that. I'll call that back. Uh, we'll see you there. Well, we, we we don't have another party scheduled, but it's always a great time when we go out there. But if you uh, if you need something for lunch or dinner, drop by Bosco's Pub in Hudsonville, Michigan, part of Terra Square. My Policy Shop Insurance, Frank Fuss, the Medicare Advantage Plan expert. I'm reminded of how great he is when I go to pick up the NFK's medicine which he used to pay quite a bit for, for his uh, anti-seizure medication. Now it literally is $0. I don't know how he does it, but there are various entitlements and things that you as a Medicare subscriber um, are, well, entitled to. But you have to make the right choices. And if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you can screw this up. The NFK is a perfect example of that. He had to get a Medicare Advantage plan checkup from Frank Fuss to make sure that he had the right boxes checked. Once he did, everything was so much better. You pay into this for your entire life. Make sure you're getting the most out of the Medicare system. 616-914-4070. Call today to get started. It doesn't cost you anything. This is free. Frank, as a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker, he doesn't take money from you, okay? His advice is free. He makes his money from the insurance companies. So get a hold of Frank today and say, Eric Zane sent me. Either call or text and say, Eric Zane sent me. I need to know uh, about a Medicare checkup. And this could be for you if you're already utilizing the Medicare system or you're about to. Maybe you're getting ready to turn 65. Or 
Um, if you have a loved one who is utilizing it right now, suggest this. All it is is a phone call with a couple of questions answered, and Frank is on the ball. He's on the case, 616-914-4070. Okay. Um, Joe Biden off the cuff uh, might start World War III. If your goal is to not start World War III and you then don't read what the speechwriters suggest you read when you're in Poland, you could be starting World War III. What the fuck? All the guy has to do is read. What this is terrible. What does have to do with the future of trucking? At Chevron, we're working with partners to turn Shit. the methane We've got a, we got a commercial. into the fuels of the future. All right, fine, great, if you say so. My message to the people of Ukraine is a message I delivered today to Ukraine's foreign minister and defense minister, who I believe are here tonight. We stand with you, period. Everybody's like, yeah, of course, that's, that's the right thing to say. We stand with you. Even though he doesn't even know if they're there, he says, I believe they're here tonight. And defense minister, who I believe are here tonight, we stand with you, period. <laughs> America forces are in Europe, not in Europe, to engage in conflict with Russian forces. American forces. What? Slow the fuck down. You're reading. He always smishes his words. America forces are in Europe, not in Europe to engage in conflict with Russian forces. American forces are here to defend NATO allies. Yesterday I met with the troops that are serving alongside our Polish allies to bolster NATO's frontline defenses. The reason we wanted to make clear is their movement on Ukraine. Don't even think Ooh. about moving on one single inch of NATO territory. Now, for all intents and purposes, most people agreed that this was a decent speech leading up to the end. No one gives a shit about anything he says, though, because of the ending, when he ruined it by going off script. A dictator bent on rebuilding an empire will never erase a people's love for liberty. Brutality will never grind down their will to be free. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. For free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. Well, let me back that up. It sounded like he said fee people. Will never be a victory for Russia. For free people refused to uh. live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principles, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. That's the problem. So then the speechwriters, all the, uh, the the White House is like, oh, no. No, you can't say that. Um, What are you suggesting there? The um, reporter staff, the reporters that follow him from uh, wherever, you know, place to place on the globe said, are you suggesting he be that a, that a regime change and he says no well how can you possibly say no you just said it so yes we all know that we all know he can't remain in power but there is a fine line for what we're trying to do here remember this is the world's biggest nuclear arsenal and we don't know how crazy this guy is it's already really, really weird that Ukraine, uh, every day, their military might is increasing because of the weapons that we send them. That reason alone is, you know, dicey. This could lead to a, a, a war right there. I mean, if this, if this sick fuck Putin, as I've said many times, I mean, what's the end game here? Because I don't think he's going to win this. Ultimately, uh, he'll have to leave. Um, 
you know, uh, as more and more people leave Ukraine, uh, so much of the population has just left the country. The ones that do remain are all in shelters underground and things like that. So the, it's just basically uh, uh, becoming rubble and um, more and more weaponry arriving from the United States. Uh, if this guy has to turn tail and run, it just seems to me like he might do it while lobbying a nuclear warhead. So I don't know if this is the right approach to suggest a regime change. Just keep your fucking mouth shut and less saber rattling. That's the appropriate way to do this, I think. Um, Kyle says, oh, no, he didn't read teleprompter. Remind you of any fat orange idiots. Yeah, turn the page, man. Who cares? No one cares about that anymore, Kyle. The fact of the matter is, he's the president, and we're involved in what could be World War III. Trump, that's that's history. No one gives a shit anymore. It's a stupid comment. Um, Zaniac Zoom responds, that's uh, Nick, responds, funny how you can't get Trump's spray tan dick out of here out of your mouth long enough to actually criticize the current administration. Me thinks you have a problem. Well, God, that sounds horrible. That's a terrible thing to say. What the fuck is wrong with you, Nick? I I didn't even go that far. Funny how you can't get Trump's spray tan dick out of your mouth. Come on. Fucking terrible. All right. Yeah, Trump. Come on, guys. Trump is, uh, it's, it's just stupid. Move on. Let's talk about what's going on now. Jesus. So that was a huge gaffe and a problem. And um, the Russians right away said, well, you know, the Russian people elected Putin. Yeah, I guess. Um, the line sent ripples throughout the U.S. foreign policy community. Kyle. The, uh, the White House immediately tried to walk that back. This is a terrible fuck up. Okay. Uh, while a war is going on, make no mistake, this is a bad, bad thing. Uh, the White House quickly clarified that Biden was not calling for regime change in his speech. It sure as fuck sounded like it, contending that the president's point was that Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over his neighbors or the region. Quote, he was not discussing Putin's power in Russia or regime change, an official said in a statement. Yeah, you, you can you can try to spin that any way, shape, or form, but your boss said it. So you can't uh, have him say it and then change what he's saying. If anybody can change what he's saying, he can change it. So not you. But the walk back only prompted the question of why Biden uttered the line in the first place and whether he had consciously meant to convey the message. The words had not been in his, in his prepared marks. This all while, you know, if you were to pay attention to what Biden's been saying initially when this all started over a month ago, it's like, no, 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 we're not getting involved. We're not getting involved. I don't know, man. If this, uh, I, I, I keep think hearing more and more, he's talking less about that. And he's, he seems to be saber rattling more, does Biden. Biden used the evening speech in Poland's capital to rally, to rally American allies to be clear-eyed in a, quote, battle between democracy and autocracy, between liberty and repression. And he warned, and, and that warned, that he warned requires vigilance and wouldn't end soon. All right, there's more to it. I'll send it to you and I'll link it up. You can check it out because it's too long and I'm already swimming in the deep end. You know how that is. Big mistake on his part. I mean, I know you want him to say, yeah, we're going to do it. I mean, I agree. He, he cannot remain in power. But you also have the threat of a nuclear war that could end the world as we know it. So there's that. <clears throat> All right. We have another teacher incident. All right. Let me, uh, of course, a guy that looks like this is involved in a terrible incident. Uh, 
with the teacher. I'm sorry, with the student. Of course. Look at this guy. That is the picture of gym teacher Craig Schmeckpepper, which is a perfect name for a gym teacher, 50-year-old gym teacher accused of one charge of child abuse not resulting in serious injury. Mr. Schmeckpepper. He's a Nebraska, or he was a Nebraska elementary and middle school gym teacher. He has turned him in on a child abuse warrant as of Friday. A number of reports about Schmeckpepper. The warrant for the arrest was issued March 22nd. The Omaha World Herald reported that um, the sheriff's department was searching for the disgraced ex-teacher before he turned himself in. As of March 24th, you're like, what did he do? How terrible is this? All right. The incident in question actually happened February 17th. The attorney general says that uh, Schmeckpepper knowingly and intentionally caused or permitted a minor child to be placed in a situation that endangers his or her life or physical or mental health. Wow, it's pretty terrible, right? The newspaper also reports that the allegation is essentially that the boy in this story was subjected to simple assault. Cops say Schmeckpepper grabbed one of the kids out of, li- out of the line or whatever they were doing in gym class and pinned his arms behind his back. You know, almost like he's got handcuffs on, but he's holding on to him. And told the rest of the students to hit him as he was constrained as the line moved on. Free hits as you go by. Schmeck Pepper reportedly told all the passing students, according to court documents submitted by local prosecutors. Go ahead. Free punches. Which, you know, that sounds about right for when I was in school. I'll never forget what Mr. Bowen did to Tommy Kepler, who chuckled during sex ed, fifth grade sex ed. Uh, I think they were talking about what happens to a a lady when she's menstruating. And Tommy Kepler made the mistake of he's laughing, trying to hold it in. We talk about something that you're guaranteed to laugh about. And I mean, they were, they were showing like a, uh, an animation of a silhouette of a human body with the with the fallopian or the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and the uterus and then the graphic shows like what takes place in some stupid way and he starts cracking up Mr. Bowen who always wore a tracksuit like fucking Polly Walnuts struts over there and just grabs him in the same type of head hold that Jake the Snake used to put people in for the DDT except he didn't put the DDT on him. He just flipped him and threw the little fucker through the air. And he like goes crashing on the desktops. You want to laugh? I'll give you something to laugh about. I mean, that's a line you say to a kid. I'll give you something to laugh about. Well, there's nothing to laugh about. Tommy was fucked up. I still talk to Tommy. Holy shit. About that time, Mr. Bowen kicked his ass. So uh, Schmeck Pepper's doing that. Free punches. Five students complied with the invitation. But they just lightly touched the kid in his stomach. They did no damage. No one, like, really punched him. Which, I mean, when I was a kid, if Mr. Bowen did that to me, I can guarantee you Dan Donovan would have been at the front of the line and he would have ruptured my fucking spleen, dickhead. You know, my, uh, back in the day, half the kids were abused by their parents. I'm not even kidding you. That's the way in the 1970s and early 80s, kids were brought up. All parents beat the shit out of their kids. So they take it out on me in the schoolyard. And I have no defense. I'm the smallest kid in the class. 
So I got the shit kicked out of me all the time, and I never fucking learned. I would still mouth off. That was Chris Rock, and they were all Will Smith beating the shit out of me all the time, except I never learned. Chris Rock's never going to say another word about Will Smith uh, or his wife again. I would never learn. Shit. Five other students touched the boy, but they didn't hit him. So that was no problem. So not sure what uh, Schmeck Pepper was doing there. The alleged victim also reported that he felt pain from having his arms pinned back during the incident. Now, if you're Schmeck Pepper, this is not 1979. And that is not Little Eric or Tommy Kepler. You could have done that then. So basically, there is no damage done to the kid. None. It might have just been silly. In fact, I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt that it was silly. But this is 2022. So this kid now is ruined. Okay? I'm surprised we haven't heard yet about him throwing himself out into traffic. There is no coping ability whatsoever. Even if he was being silly, this guy is fucking dead. Schmeck Pepper. According to the local reports, deputies with the Dodge County Sheriff's Office say they interviewed two witnesses who were present during the humiliating ritual who corroborated the boy's complaint. Investigators also reportedly reviewed security camera footage that shows it happening. Okay, yes, but I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt that there's no way this guy actually was trying to hurt this kid. I would need to see that with my own eyes to see and hear how aggressive it was. Um, Additionally, the um, public school officials are said to have conducted their own internal investigation and turned their files over to law enforcement. Uh, This guy is obviously arrested. Um, He immediately resigned from his job. Um, And that's it. Now, um, He is accused of a class 3A felony, which carries a potential sentence of no time behind bars with a maximum of three years in prison, as well as up to 18 months of post-release supervision and a fine of up to $10,000. Now, I mean, I guess it would depend on an interview. When you you talk to the guy, it's like, well, hey, what, what was going on? Explain it to me before you freak out on this dude. But I am going to take the unpopular opinion because all of you are no doubt freaking out that Schmeck Pepper is an evil man. But I would need more information before I uh, ended this guy's teaching career. Okay? I don't I don't think for a second um, that we should just rush to judge. Uh, let's see. Is this a news report about it? Let's see if there's more information on Schmeck Pepper. I think there is. I think there actually is, and this is good. Uh, let me share this. Maybe this can sp- spread some uh, spread some more information about it. How about Andrea with the big save earlier? That was awesome. Oh, hang on. I got a stupid ad. All right. Now we're ready. Elementary teacher in Dodge County is facing child abuse charges. The Dodge County Sheriff's Office confirms that they arrested 50-year-old Greg. All right, this is way short, and it's not going to provide any more information. Smack Pepper on a felony warrant. He's charged with child abuse not resulting in serious injury. It's in relation to an investigation of a... Child abuse not resulting in serious injury. How about child abuse not re- resulting in no injury? There was no injury. How can that be child abuse? Incident back in February at North Bend Elementary. Smeck Pepper resigned from the school immediately after the incident. All right. There's nothing there. It was a waste of time. I apologize. Loud noises. Bane of my existence. Ads before videos. Serves me right for just going for it. All right. Ah, the Detroit Lions. Dan Campbell's Lions will be starring on Hard Knocks this summer on HBO Max. I love that. Yes. Great news. Okay. So that guy's out of a job. 
Uh, Nick says, I'm on Schmecky's side for now. Kids are assholes, and sometimes their asses need kicked. <laughs> Adam says, I'm going to laugh so hard when teachers everywhere just quit. Kyle says, are we going to see some kneecaps bit off with the Lions? You know, though, if, if you think about it, though, I don't know how a teacher ever puts their hands on a kid nowadays. I don't, I don't get it. How can you possibly make that mistake? Okay. I got to share with you something fantastic that happened at paintball yesterday. And uh, the asshole of the day coming up as well, TC Paintball. That's where we were, having a wonderful time. TCPaintballGR.com if you want to do your own event. Wednesdays is Little League Day. Thursdays is Ladies Day. TCPaintballGR.com. We started with a pizza party from BC Pizza. And then uh, there we were having a great time. This would have been our biggest ever. We had a number of things fall into place where um, life kind of got in the way of several folks who were supposed to be there. We had 16 playing, which is a, a low number that we've had compared to what we've had in the past. But I'm not kidding you. If the number of people that had committed, if uh, if that did go through the way as planned, but like I said, various things happened that they couldn't make it. Oh my God, we'd had so many damn people there. Um, it was abs- It would have been absolutely. It was great as it was. But uh, thanks to Rick and the crew for putting on a great show once again. If you want to do your own paintball party, tcpaintballgr.com. Uh, you just drop in during the week. Saturday, you definitely want to make a plan. Call them ahead of time. Tell them that you're coming. Make that plan. And then uh, Sunday's open too. tcpaintballgr.com. Bennett Flooring Installation. The flooring installer on the Eric Zane Show podcast. Jacob and Jason, thank you so much. I already talked about the flooring that you need to buy from Johnson's Carpet One Floor and Home Discount Outlet. Have the Bennett boys install it for you. Bennett Flooring Installation. If you are in West Michigan, call this number to get a free estimate. 616-318-0167. They're all about you getting as much of the work done as you can on your own, which will save you money in the long run. That makes their job quicker, too. Now, they can give you full service if you want. It's up to you. But uh, just another opportunity for you to save cash with Bennett Flooring Installation, 616-318-0167. And then last but not least, my friends at Full House Comedy. Just uh, finishing up a great weekend with Jay Moore. This weekend, Andy Beningo live at Howard City Lanes on Wednesday. And then Andy is going to be at Rockford Lanes on Friday. That's great. Donnie Baker at the Park Theater coming up on Thursday of this week. Donnie also going to be at Back Alley Comedy Club on Friday. And uh, yeah, a ton more shows as well, including uh, Eleanor Kerrigan. And uh, Christopher Titus. So that is so cool. In fact, Christopher Titus is going to be at Back Alley Comedy Club on April 2nd um, for two shows there. All of the tickets for all these shows available at fullhousecomedy.com. Uh, thanks to everyone who sent me uh, stories in. Amanda sent me a great one that I'm saving for the Patreon about a, a guy who was eating a salad at the Red Robin. And um, there was a little bit more in the salad than what he bargained for. All right. That coming up. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. While we were um, doing paintball, Gabe the Honduran, um, we were getting ready to play a uh, three-on-three game. It was Gabe... Gabe's son, Gabe Jr., and Gabe's brother, Juan. Taking on me. Well, we didn't know the teams yet. It was six of us. It was those three were there. I was there. Um, Sierra, which is uh, Terry's daughter, Terry and Beth's daughter. And I forgot who was the sixth person there. But Rick said, okay, we're going to divide up teams. 
Whoever's got an even birthday, go to that side of the field. Whoever has an odd birthday, go to this side of the field. So one person goes to the opposite side of the field. Oh, it was Bo. It was uh, Mitch's son, Bo. So um, that that's what it was. So only one person of the six goes to the opposite side of the field. Go, well, it's not working. People all have even numbers. And then uh, Rick goes, well, then how are we going to divide this up? And Gabe Jr. says, how about by race? And <laughs> we go, yeah. <laughs> so the Hondurans took a walk we it was it was hondurans versus whitey and i said yep wall in the middle it's trying to keep you guys from crossing the border we actually did a border war the whites versus the browns it was spectacular and they won they invaded fuck me oh my god your asshole of the day i wrote it before we even started as will smith i i still can't believe that happened i haven't even processed this and all the way, this is fucking great. What a thing. What a fucking asshole this guy is. He is your asshole of the day today on the Eric Zane Show. It has to be. I mean, come on, man. Chris Rock is fucking great. Him, the way he rolled with that was spectacular, man. That was that was not easy to do. Nick describes the paintball war as the clan versus the tan. You asshole. All right, folks. Thank you so much. Talk to you on the Patreon. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Being a baseball fanatic like me can be stressful. It's not all sports points and touchdowns. So Progressive is going to help you take your mind off your team for a moment. Instead of thinking about how they missed that goal point score, think about the Name Your Price tool from Progressive letting you choose coverage options based on your budget. Unlike your team that missed the end zone net area. Well, anyway, hope this distraction about Progressive's Name Your Price tool was helpful. It sure kept me from thinking about all those penalty balls. Yay, sports! Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.